Graham frequently references modestly low probabilities in order to be pessimistic and not be overly optimistic and subject to confirmation bias. So this is a stark reminder. Finding life on one planet in a system does not guarantee universal life next door. Now obviously Heatre is supposed to be Earth and SRAM is supposed to be Mars and that's given the fact that life exists on Earth Mars is essentially in the habitable zone. It's not quite beyond the snow line that Adam talks about. And so it resonates a little bit with the cautious optimism that Adam expresses. Plenty of worlds might have life, but it's not a foregone conclusion that it shows up in every place that meets basic habitability criteria, even when you know life exists just next door. Now let's go a little bit deeper. Let's say that life existed on Earth and that Earth was the first place that life ever began in our galaxy. This is sort of the most pessimistic variety of life. It still doesn't explain origin of life, OOL, but it does explain perhaps how hard or easy it might be for life to then spread via some process that we'll describe, again, and calculate the odds of finding life off of the Earth. This is sort of a Drake equation where life starts on Earth and then spreads out. Not technological life, not ET life that Drake was interested in, but just life itself. It could be protozoa swimming in an ocean on Enceladus, for example. But let's extend it for maximum likelihood. Let's extend it to the entire galaxy. Now, the age of our galaxy is about 13 billion years. That's very close to 13.8 billion years, about 800 million years after the formation of the universe. And it took about 10 billion years after that event for life to appear. About 3.8 billion years ago, microbial life formed on Earth. We know that from very many sources, going from so-called stromatolites to deep ocean vents and other uh, cores of the fossil, prehistoric fossil record, if you will, of bacteria. 